every day. Every day. Walking on the beach. Okay. Ready? Now that we have a good feeling for square roots, and, and hopefully that's the case, but I can tell you based on the number of kids who did the square root assignment on the uh, packet, I don't know, but we can use them to help us solve special types of quadratic equations, those equations that involve a squared identity or quantity. Let's make sure we first understand the basic concept. So each of the following equations for all values of x. Anybody know why it says all values of x? Because there's more than one. Why is there more than one value? Oh shoot! Today is the perfect day to give you the money you need, and I don't have it. I'll find it for tomorrow. I got it. No, no, no. It's a no, specific no. one. Um, what did you say? Because it's squared. Yeah. I don't know. Because there's more than one. Because there's two x's instead of just one. Yeah. Keep going. I don't. know. <laughs> All right, stop. Stop digging your turn in your wheels. Yes, dear. Uh, on my desk. We have the square root. Okay. When you take the square root of something, you're looking for what number times itself equals that answer, correct? Yeah. So what number times itself equals 16? Four. Four. But what about negative four? Negative two and a positive two. Okay. So you can do this a couple of ways. And I showed you this if you watched the video, but I can tell you not many of you did. So I'm going to show you again. You can say x equals four and negative four. You may, you may see it written like this. Those mean the same thing. That's what that means. Yeah, that's what that means. Is that just a plus and a minus? It's a plus and a minus just stacked on top of each other. Yeah. But that's why it's saying for all values of x. And technically, that happens in all square roots. But most of the time, we only deal with the positive one unless the negative is in front of it. So for a square, um, x squared equals 100, x equals... 10 or negative 10. And what about 20? This is what we were working on on Friday and Thursday, but Friday. This is one of those where you have to do simplest radical form. There is no perfect square factor. Or wait, there is a perfect square factor. It's this is not a perfect square. All right, so before we go on, tell me what those numbers were again that I wrote down the side of the board yet the other day. One, four, nine. One, four, nine. How do you guys know this yeah. stuff? You did. Yeah. I talked oh, yeah. about this the other day. But I, I forgot that, so I thought they were just memorizing. Oh, I don't remember this. Oh, I gave you actually a little more than we needed. It's okay. All right. Now, when I did go through the square root assignment, the one that was for Thursday, there are lots of you who, I don't want to say lots, there are several of you who left the answer in not simplest radical form. You might have left it like this. That still has a perfect square factor in it. So your job is to find the largest one that makes your life the easiest. What's the biggest number in that list that goes evenly into 20? 100. Yeah. No, I mean four. four. I thought you meant 20 goes into the number. Uh, yeah, no. Okay, so I'm gonna split it up and this is one of the things that we talked about. I split it up into four times five. Then I'm going to split that up and do its own two separate square roots. Why would I do that? Yes, yeah, so that I can simplify that four. All right, so I cross out the four and I bring out front A. Two. But how many answers are there? Two. So I'm going to do this. Yes. And because 5 is prime, not a perfect square, there are no perfect square factors in it, so we know we're done. 
So the key here is that the inverse operation to squaring is taking the square root. But when you do this, you always introduce both a positive and a negative answer. Squaring is a non-reversible process, meaning that you can't simply undo it. Now, let's look at some additional operations. Recall that we will always solve equations by undoing operations in the opposite order in which they have been done. In terms of order of operations, exponents essentially come first, so they will be undone last. In other words, the last thing you do is take the square root. Everything else gets handled first. Okay, solve each of the following equations for all values of x by using inverse operations. In each case, your final answer will be rational. What does that mean? <coughs> they end. Yes, they end or they repeat. They can be written as what? Fraction. Fraction. Yeah. Okay, so letter A. What do we need to move first? If you were going to solve it. You want to get that x by itself. What do we move first? The 10. The 10. Minus, minus it. Okay, do it. Then what? Divide by two. Divide by two. Okay. Is the x squared all by itself? Yes. 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 Now you're ready to take the square root. What is the square root of 9? 3. three. What is the square root of 9? 3. Positive and negative 3. What, honey? Why do you square root the 9? Because whatever you do to one side, you have to do the other. And the only way to get that squared away from that x is to take the square root. So if I square root this side, i got to square root that side. That's it. That's it. All right, what about letter B? Plus five. Okay. I'm gonna switch out my marker here. Times two. Say it again. Times two. Everybody okay with times two? Because you get rid of dividing by multiplying. Okay. And then, take your square root. What's your square root of 16? Positive and negative 4. All right. What are we going to do in C? You actually don't have to make your life so much harder if you foil it. How'd you get it here? Nope. Hey, guys. Distribute. Is the square is the is the squared by itself already? Yeah. Yes. This whole thing is being squared. You can't get inside of there. So take the square root. That's it. That's it. Well, not quite that's it, but that's our first step. Because that entire entity, that's like one big gigantic x, even though it's x minus two. It's like one big old X, and you can't do anything inside of there until you get rid of that square. How are you getting rid of the square? You're square rooting it. Okay. What's the square root of 25? Five. What? Positive and negative 5. Okay, now. What the heck do I do now? Plus two. I add two. Well, then you have to do equals positive five and then equals negative. Mm -hmm. So we have five plus two, but we also have negative five. Negative five plus two. Well, five plus two is seven. Negative five plus two is negative three. Negative three. So that one has two answers. Well, they all have two answers, but some of them have opposites. That one doesn't have opposites. How are we doing? It's not that bad, is it? No, I didn't think so. Okay. How about letter D? What am I going to do first? Add 50. Not her phone. My phone's ringing. That's the phone over there. Yeah. You're the closest one in the room to my phone, and you thought that was my phone ringing? I don't know. Some people 
I heard, no, I heard it. It's from over there, though. Here, wait, up here, wait. It's from over there. Leo, mine's really loud. So when it rains, are you back? Oh, you're going to know it. No, you can't. Outside lines can't call in during the day. Okay, now what? I'll call us. What do I do? No, no, no. no. Divide, Divide by two. Divide by two. Oh, what is that? That's fun. <laughs> oh, that was really scary. Oh, no, they're playing around in the auditorium or something. I felt my chair vibrate. Yeah, my, yeah, I felt the floor vibrate. Okay, now what? Square root. So I get x plus 5 equals? Positive and negative 10. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This isn't usually how I show it. You know how sometimes I split things off? Like absolute value, I split them off. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, okay, x plus 5 might equal 10. x plus 5 might equal negative 10. So what's x in the top one? Minus 5. So x equals 5. And what about the bottom one? x equals negative 15. Yep. Minus 5, minus 5. x equals negative 15. Where is it? I can't see it, but I can see it on here. Okay. What are you thinking? Okay, so you know that I'm going to make it harder, right? If I need any code. Okay. Of course. Okay. Do you follow certain of these? Probably only you. Wow. Probably only you. Why are you all this? 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 Oh, I Wait, is this like a private? Yeah, I like Seth. I like Kirk, but I'm not obsessed with it. Like, I'm not gonna follow his oh, yeah, Instagram. That is, that is, that is such a lie. Yeah, uh, all of the gold kids yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a few months ago. I've changed as a person since then. I've changed as a person. My inner morals have shifted. I got you. Inner morals. <laughs> Okay, so wait, of course, there is no reason our answers must come out in rational numbers. We can also hear the answers to these types of equations that involve irrational numbers. In these cases, we are typically asked for some unknown reason. I love when people are really for some unknown reason to express our answer in simplest radical form. Solve each of the following quadratic functions by using inverse operations. Express all of your answers in simplest radical form. When they say that to you, like little bells should be going off in your head. Oh, yeah, okay. They're not going to say to me simplest radical form if there's going to be no radicals. There's going to be no square roots. All right? Okay, letter A. Tell me what to do. Add plus two. Add two. Add two. So we're just still solving. We're just still solving. It's just that our answers are not going to come out as nice. But you guys are probably actually going to like it a little bit better. Wow. You'll see why. And then divide by five. And then divide by five. And it's eight. X squared equals eight. Okay. And we get X squared equals eight. Now, eight is not on my list. But nine. Correct? It's not close enough. Not close enough. Eight times two is 16. But four is. So, I take my square root, and I get, very important that you don't forget, oh wait, okay, I forget, we got to break it up, I can't just jump to the answer for you guys. Four times what? Four times two, then we're going to break that up. Yes. Some of you eventually will get to the point where you skip this part yeah. and you just go I to it. Some of us didn't do enough of the practice on Thursday to be at that place yet. All right, what do I cross out? Cross out the four. What do I replace it with? Two. Two. 
the only thing I have left to do. Let's put the positive and the negative. So it still has two answers. It's just that this time they're not rational answers, they're irrational answers. That's all. Why do you want a mark? No, we're not drawing out. All right. Number letter B. Minus 10. Minus 10. Leo is on this. It's not, it's not. Wow, Leo. No confidence in your abilities. And then you square root the whole thing. Then you square root the whole thing. Can I break up 28? Yes, I can. I'm going to come off to the side and do it. The square root of two and th oh well okay well it's it's four times seven right yeah, but then what happens yeah. with the four it's see it's a good thing I interpret eighth grade speak pretty well eighth grade speak yeah you all speak a funny way I know okay so this is two square root seven yes are we okay what did I forget already positive and negative is there X alone yet? No. I have to add three, don't I? Watch how I do this. So I'm going to do this. And my answer is going to be X equals three plus and minus two square root seven. So you don't so have to don't. split it up into two things. That time is absolutely acceptable. Oh, leave it. All right. Can I plus or minus be negative? Yes. All right. So, Francis graphs the parabola of y equals x one half x squared minus six on the grid below. He believes that the quadratic has zeros of negative three and a half and three and a half. Okay. Well, first of all, Francis is doing. What the heck are zeros? Who's this Francis? What the heck is zero? Zero. Yes. What are zeros on a graph? The, the where the, 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 the line touches what? The x. The x. The x. What are you doing? All of us. Why do you break this every <laughs> single time? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up today. Thank goodness. It was a rough morning. Okay. Yes. Zeros are these two things right here. Where the parabola touches the x-axis. Okay. Find the zeros of this function by in simplest radical form and explain why Francis must be incorrect. I bet the zeros are like 3.49. <laughs> Well, let's figure it out. Okay, so you ready? Oh. Equals what? Y. No. Zero. Zero. Why is it equal zero? Because they're called zeros. Okay, solve it. Go, solve it. It's not that easy. I'm <laughs> You're the one that was answering all the beginning. Okay, because that was easy. This is not. It's, it's the same thing. Miss Rowe, what is the point of this? <laughs> the point is to confuse you. How's it doing? Good. Is it working? Good job. They're going to ask a question like this. Yes. And if you get it right, you get the job. Exactly. Why do you think you're qualified for this job? The mitochondria. And that thing's a stop. Because it doesn't mean the mitochondria is the power of the cell. Yeah. You're higher. All right, am I done? No. No, why not? Because you have to square root it. I have to square root it. Okay. Is 12 on my list? No. Does it have a factor on my list? Yes. Factor of? Four. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do 4 times 3, cross out the 4, bring out a? 2. What? 2. 2. Bring out a 2. 2. Yeah. Yeah, you change the thing to a two. But what did I forget? 
Okay. So before I go any further, can I tell if he's correct or not? No. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. What do you know about the square root of three? It's not existent. It's three. It's, it's, three is prime. What kind of a number is it? Rational or irrational? Irrational. It's irrational. Look at what he said his answers were. Those are rational. You can't get that to be that. So he is incorrect. Because the roots or the zeros are irrational. Now, are they are they close? Actually, Leo's Leo's pretty right. They're they're going to be pretty close when we put them into our calculator. But you cannot, 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 cannot take an irrational number and tell me that it's rational. Yes, sir. A slash in between them begin to see from the parts. Yeah, I did because it's not texting. But texting, I wouldn't. But I'm not texting. This is not. Francis was incorrect based on A, but not too far off. How can you tell his estimate was good? Because it was pretty close. Nolan's got his calculator out. Nolan, do us a favor. Oh. Leo has it too. Never mind, Nolan. Leo's got. Oh, <laughs> Nolan, you're up. Yeah, All right, Nolan, ready? You're going to put into your calculator two square root three equals. <laughs> what? What do you got? Someone else, please. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to take a quick moment to recognize our student of the month for the month of uh, April. I'm sorry, that would be March. And at this time, if I call your name, if you could please come down to the office to have your picture taken, if you're not here yet. D.B. Allen, Mason Snook, Pablo Rosario Reyes, Madison Muckle, Abigail Hunt, Michelle Fitzwater, if I called your name, could you please come down to the office at this time? I'd like to congratulate all of those students for being the March Student of the Month. And also, they'll also be receiving an ice cream at lunch today. Keep up the good work, work, and I hope to see some of you on the Student of the Month list for the month of April. Thank you. So it is close, isn't it? It's pretty close. Yeah. Yes, but we can't take something that's irrational and call it rational. Oh, look, we got time to do number five real quick. Yes. Oh, sorry. I already did. You just, just you didn't have to it. Negative 3.464. Dot, dot, dot. One of them has one of 3.464. All right, finally, number five. Find the zeros of the function, okay, blah, 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 simple theoretical form, and then express them in terms of a decimal rounded to the nearest hundred. You guys aren't reading, by the way. Things on the test will say, put an S in the solution. Nothing. It will say to the nearest hundred. And I'll get answers rounded to the nearest 10. You guys don't go through and do all kinds of beautiful work. And I mean beautiful. Don't go through and do all kinds of beautiful work and lose a point because you rounded to the wrong place. She would be. She would be. As would. As will be Mrs. Rowe. Just so we're clear. You're not <laughs> I don't have to be a strict to be uh, disappointed. A strict? She made Nolan sit on the floor all day. Strict? You would stand up sometimes. This is a story for another time, although Nolan, I cannot wait to hear the story. <laughs> We're going to try and get this finished before that darn bell rings. Okay, now take your square root.
square root of 20 can be broken down. Four times five. Plus minus two five. Two square root two. Two square root five. Plus minus two square root five. Where did the two from? Right here, man. Yeah. That's a four. But Cross. Well, what's the square root of four? Oh. Sometimes the man gets confused a little bit. I'm not done yet, though. Why not? Minus four. So I get x equals negative four plus and minus is two square root yeah. of five. Yeah. I'm going to skip the um, rounded to the nearest hundredth because we don't have that kind of time right now. But I do want to look at your homework so I can tell you what it is you're doing. Okay. You wish. I am so sorry. Okay, so the questions in number one. Those are all going to come out to rational numbers. Yes. So okay. So those are going to come out to rational. Yes, do them. Um, the questions in number three. What did I say? The questions in number three are not. They are going to come out to be those radicals with the simplest radical form. I just want you to focus on one and three for tonight. One and three. I down during the tutorial what I did. Yes. Can we get a pass? One and three. You can get a pass. I'm sure. Do you know when I text, I just type out the whole word? What does that mean? Like, you know how 